Okay, so I'm going to walk through um, several examples of solving rational equations here. Um, a rational equation is any equation that has um, fractions with um, variables in the denominator. That is what constitutes a rational equation. We first, in order to solve a rational equation, you want to check if there's more than one fraction. You would want to um, factor each of the denominators. In this case, we only have one fact fraction. So what we're going to do is multiply both sides of the equation by that denominator so that we can clear out the denominator and we won't have to worry about fractions anymore. Now one common error that, that happens is that people forget that they're doing this in order to cancel the denominator and they go ahead and multiply it out. So please um, remember that the reason we're multiplying both sides by the denominator here we multiplied this side on the left to cancel the denominator, but our rules say we have to do whatever we do to the left side, we have to do the right side, so that we wrote multiplied it on the right also. So the 3x minus 5 cancels over here on the left, and we are left with 2x equals 8 times 3x minus 5. Now we have just a regular old equation that we need to solve. So remember our steps. First we would distribute the 8 and we would have 2x equals 8 times 3 is 24x, and 8 times negative 5 is a negative 40, and then we solve that equation. I'm going to bring my x's over to the same side. Hit negative 22x is equal to negative 40. Divide both sides by negative 22, and then reduce my fractional answer as much as I possibly can. Negative 40 divided by negative 22 would be positive, and I can reduce that to 2011. Okay, so this is my solution. With rational equations, you always want to go back up to the original problem and make sure that this is not an extraneous solution, meaning um, it cannot make the denominator equal zero, because remember, we can't have denominators of zero. But if I were to put 20 over 11 in there, it would not make my denominator zero, so this is a valid answer. All right, here's another example. Notice again, I only have one fraction, so my first step is to clear the denominator by multiplying both sides by 2 minus x. So that's what I'm going to do. Multiply both sides by what I had in the denominator there. That cancels, and I have x squared. Whoops. Highlighter instead of a pen there. I have x squared minus 4 equals, I'm going to distribute here, 6 minus 3x. Now we are left with no fractions, that was our whole goal there, but now look, we have an x squared, and we also have x's here. Anytime that happens, you know that in order to solve, you're always either going to have to factor or use the quadratic formula. So in order to do that, we have to have the equation equal to zero. So our next step is to move everything to the same side of the equation. So I'm going to subtract x, excuse me, subtract 6, and add 3x to both sides, and then put it in the order we're used to seeing it, which would be x squared, then our x's, and finally our constant on the end. So I would have x squared plus 3x minus 10 equals 0. Now I can factor this either by solving or using the quadratic formula. If it factors, that's usually the faster way to go. This will factor if there are factors of negative 10 that add to equal positive 3 which there are um, positive 5 and negative 2. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10 here on the end, and 5 minus 2 is a positive 3. We set each of those factors equal to 0 and solve them. And we get x is negative 5 and x is positive 2. Now we do have to go check both of those solutions to make sure they're not extraneous, or make sure, in other words, that they do not make this denominator zero. And notice if I put two in there, I would get zero into the denominator. So two is not a valid solution because it's not 
um, part of my um, possible answers. So my only solution here is negative 5. So make sure you check your solutions because sometimes they will not work. All right, here is yet another problem. This one's a little different. It has um, more numbers over here on the right-hand side. So this is just to check and make sure we remember all of our steps. Uh, the first thing, again, that we do is multiply both sides by that denominator so that we can get rid of it. So I'm going to multiply both sides by x minus 2. And as it should on the left-hand side, it cancels with the denominator, and I get 3x minus 1 equals, let's back around my x minus 2 over here. We want to make sure and remember, when you have something like this, x minus 3 times x minus 2, we have to FOIL that. Okay, So we have to take x times x gives us x squared, and x times negative 2 is a negative 2x, negative 3 times x is negative 3x, and finally negative 3 times negative 2 is a positive 6. Okay, so we have 3x minus 1 equals x squared. We're going to simplify this right-hand side, combine our like terms. We'll have x squared minus 5x plus 6. Once again, we have x squareds and x's, so we know we need this equal to 0 in order to solve it. So I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides to move that, and I'm going to add 1 to both sides so that I have 0 on one side and everything else on the other. So now I have 0 is equal to x squared minus 8x plus 7. Now again, I can solve this either by factoring or by using the quadratic formula, the negative b plus or minus squared or b squared. Okay, But if it factors, that's usually the better way to go. Are there factors of positive 7 that add to equal negative 8? And fortunately there are. Okay negative 1 and negative 7. Multiply to be positive 7, add to equal a negative 8. I set each of those factors equal to 0, and I solve them. And for my solutions, I get x is equal to positive 1 and x is equal to positive 7. Now again, go back to your fraction. Make sure it doesn't make it the denominator 0. 1 minus 2 would give me negative 1, so it's okay. And 7 minus 2 would give me positive 5. It is also okay. So this one has two solutions. Okay. Here we have another example. Again, we have that pesky denominator that comes with rational equations. So our first job is to multiply both sides by 5 minus x squared. Okay, make sure you don't forget to multiply both sides. Sometimes we forget to write it down. Okay. On the left-hand side, those cancel just like we planned. And on the right-hand side, I'm going to distribute. 3x times 5 is a 15x. And 3x times negative x squared is a negative 3x to the third. Again, I have uh, exponents, so I need to get 0 on one side and everything else on the other and see what happens from there. So this time I'm going to add 3x to the third to both sides and subtract 15x. You can do that in multiple steps if you'd like. I don't have a lot of room here, so I'm kind of trying to consolidate my work. And that gives me 4x to the third minus 17x equals 0. Now again, we're supposed to factor here. We can't use the quadratic formula because this is not a quadratic because of this cubed. But notice that we can take out a common factor. Both terms have at least an x. So that's often a step people forget about, but it's the first one you should go for every time is to check to see if there's a common factor. x was in both parts, so we could pull an x out. And we would have 4x squared minus 17. We set each factor equal to 0. So I get x equals 0, which is my first factor. And 4x squared minus 17 equals 0. 
Now, since there's just an x squared and not an x also, I can solve this by isolating the x squared and then taking the square root of both sides. So if I add 17 to both sides and then divide by 4, oops, I ran out of room down there on the bottom. Pardon me, as I'm going to bring it right up here. I have x squared equals 17 over 4. Okay. Um, remember to get rid of squares. We do the square root of both sides. And when you manually <laughs> do that, you have to put plus or minus in front. Okay. So we have plus or minus. We can't do the square root of 17, so it's just going to stay in a root. But in the denominator, the square root of 4 is 2. So I have three answers to this problem. I have x equals 0, and I have x equals positive root 17 over 2, and, and x equals negative root 17 over 2. I would want to go put them back into my original denominator to make sure it doesn't make it equal 0, but neither of them do. So my answers there, I have three. All right, here's one last example. This one's a bit more complex. Please notice I have multiple fractions here. So what you want to do is we have to find the smallest common denominator to save us some work. So what we're going to do is factor any of those denominators that will factor. Now, x minus 2 is not going to factor. That's as simple as it gets. And x plus 2 is not going to factor. But over here, this x squared minus 4 is the difference of squares, if you remember. Or you can also think of it as we have 0 x's in the middle. So we're looking for factors of negative 4 that add to equal 0. It factors as x minus 2 times x plus 2. So here are my denominators, x minus 2, x plus 2. And then this one contains both of those. I want to cancel all denominators. So I make sure I multiply by anything that's in a denominator, which in this case, the only things I have are x minus 2 and x plus 2. I have to multiply everything by those numbers so that I don't anger the math gods and break some rules here. It will also give you incorrect answers <laughs> if you don't. Okay? And then cancel the denominators. Okay? So notice x minus 2 here cancels with this x minus 2. I still have my 1 and an x plus 2 left, okay? So don't forget that. My next term, x plus 2's cancel, and I'm left with 3 on the top times x minus 2. And over here, the x minus 2 and the x plus 2 both cancel, and I'm left with x squared. Our next step is to remove any parentheses, so we don't go ahead and distribute here, and we get x plus 2 plus 3x minus 6 equals x squared. I'm going to combine like terms over on this side. I have 4x minus 4 equals x squared. Once again, we have x squares and x's, so we know we need 0 on one side, everything else on the other. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I would subtract the 4x from both sides and add 4. And here is my polynomial. 0 equals x squared minus 4x plus 4, which we can solve either by factoring or the quadratic formula. Fortunately, this factors. Negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4, and negative 2 plus negative 2 gives me a negative 4 there in the middle. So x minus 2 and x minus 2 are my factors. I would set those equal to 0. I'm just going to do one of them since they are exactly the same. And I get x equals 2 as my answer. I want to be really careful and make sure I go back to my original problem and see if it makes any of the denominators 0. And notice it does with this denominator here. If I put 2 in for x, 2 minus 2 would give me 0 here. So it's not a valid solution. It was my only possible solution I had. So the answer here would be no solution. I got an answer, but it didn't actually work for the problem. Okay, so. Best of luck, and let me know if you have questions.